Did you know our sun is actually green? If you have always thought our sun was a bright yellow ball of fire, you were wrong. It's not yellow, it's green. Scientists that mine the temperature of a star by the color spectrum, each color has its own wavelength. An astronomer measured those wavelengths to tell how a star is. Cooler stars appear red and the hottest star looks blue. Our sun emits most of its energy at a wavelength that's close to green. But because it also emits other wavelengths, all these colors mix together and our eyes see this vibrant mixture as white. That is, if you look at the sun from the International Space Station, from here on Earth, the sun looks yellow. But our atmosphere is really good at scattering blue light, and with all that blue wavelength gone, all the other colors combine into yellow. If our star was actually yellow, it would be about 800 degrees Celsius cooler. Our solar system habitable zone would shrink and Earth would become a frozen, lifeless rock. But uh, that's not the only thing you were wrong about. Well, movies make it look like you need to be an extremely skilled pilot to navigate the asteroid belt. But that's not actually true. The asteroid belt isn't some thick obstacle course of depth. It does have trillions of space rock that range in space from space dust to a quarter the size of the moon. About 100,000 of these asteroids are over one kilometer wide, but they are very spread out. This asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter is 225 km across. That's one and a half times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And this spreads this space rock millions of kilometers apart. It's almost impossible for a spacecraft to collide with the one. Well, our atmosphere is our last line of defense. Unfortunately, some space rock would just be too big for the atmosphere to consume before the crash into the Earth. So, just like in the movies, if a giant asteroid were headed our way, we should probably nuke it right, or we should not. While nuking it could help take a planet killing asteroids down a couple of notches, it would not mean we would totally be safe. If we nuke an asteroid, it would break into many smaller pieces and anyone or hundreds of those could still pose a massive hazard to life on Earth. Hopefully talking about the terror of asteroids didn't scare you too much. But did you know you can't cry in space? Well, you can cry as much as you like, but your teardrops won't fall down your cheeks like they do here on Earth. Thanks to the microgravity in space, if you stabbed your toy, on the International Space Station and started to bawl your eyes out your tears. Space Station and started to bawl your eyes out. Your tears would gather into watery blob that would float or stick to the front of your face. The sun is hot, but it's not on fire. Burning a chemical reaction of oxygen fuel, like most stars out there, our sun is a ball of gas, mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. It doesn't have much oxygen in it, instead it works more like a gigantic nuclear reactor, constantly fusing hydrogen atoms to create helium inside its core. This process releases enormous amount of energy, and that's why the sun is so scorching hot. And if you are still making noise, it would be a good time to talk about why there is mostly no sound in space. That's because space is a vacuum, but not completely a vacuum occur when music, when matter is absent, no atoms. Thanks to the movies and pop cultures, another lie you have been told what happens when an astronaut is directly exposed to space without a space suit. If you are out on a spacewalk and your suit on your helmet or wrist, this would definitely be a bad news. Space is harsh to the human body, and unless you could respond to the situation with lightning speed, you would probably die but rest assured, spontaneously explode.
If you were thrown out uh, of the airlock into the vastness of the space, you would not turn into a popsicle right away. That's because to freeze, there has to be a heat transfer from space to your body. But heat or cold doesn't travel very fast in the vacuum of space. Your body would freeze, but it would take hours to happen. And by then, you would be long dead from something else. In space, no one can hear your scream. You might remember that as the tagline to the movie Alien, but it's not true to a point while you would never be able to hear a spaceship explodes like you do in the movies. There are some areas in space where there may be enough particles allow sound to travel and when we are speaking about sound, well, Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun. Surprisingly, it's not the hottest. It's extreme though during the day. The surface temperature reaches 430 degrees and at night it drops to minus 180 degrees. But the most hellish planet in the solar system is Venus. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere to retain all that heat from the Sun. But Venus' atmosphere, on the other hand, is very thick and it creates a greenhouse effect. It's like global warming on steroids and it makes Venus as hot as hell with temperature of about 475 degrees. While you're floating around out here, we might well tackle another misconception. We should talk about another misconception. But for this, we need to change the direction. Maybe try blowing air in one direction to see if that will move you. It's not because you have got a helmet on your head. Even if you could exhale forcefully, it would be strong enough to watch you. And that's why staying attached to the handrails or having thrusters on your suit is important to keep you close to where you want to be. Space seeming probably cold, but actually, it's not. In reality, space doesn't have a temperature at all. Temperature is defined by the speed at which particles moves and move and the amount of energy they have in true vacuum of space. There are no particles to move around. That's why the vacuum is temperature less. Of course, outer space isn't a perfect vacuum. It still has particles and radiations to produce heat some areas of space are actually really hot, like space around stars. But the further away you get from the stars, the more spread out the particles are, making these areas of space pretty chilly. Some dense gas clouds can get as cold as minus 263 degrees Celsius. In space, no one can hear your scream. And that's only true to a point sound needs a medium to travel through and in space some molecules are very far apart so the sound fits before it gets very far all the cosmic catastrophic supernovas are colliding black holes go quiet before you can hear them but some places in space have a lot of particles for sound to travel though like the hot gas cloud around the black hole it has so much gas at the center of a Perseus galaxy cluster, it has so much gas that actually you can hear. Let me tell you about the explosion in space. These are not real. A spaceship can go down in a violent blast because there is no air out there in space. No air means no oxygen. And no oxygen means no fire. Meteorites may look like they are on fire as they blaze their way through our atmosphere. But again, that's not exactly the case. If you're lucky enough to catch a glimpse of a shooting star, what you are really seeing is the glow from the intense air pressure in front of the meteorite. As it speeds through our atmosphere, the rapid compression of air in front of the meteor heats things up until it's glowing bright and as a result of all that heat meteorites tend up to burn up in our atmosphere even though they are not technically on fire it seems that there are 
too many stars in the night sky for you to count, but actually you can. All those scientists at Harvard have already done it for you. According to the Yale Bright Star catalog, there are 9,110 stars that you can see from Earth with the naked eye. Try to count them all for yourself. We were always told that there is no gravity in space, and if there is no gravity, well, there must be no weight. Otherwise, how could astronauts just rock around this International Space Station? Well, the term's zero gravity is misleading. There will always be some amount of force acting on an object. In the case of astronauts on the International Space Station, they are not actually weightless. They are in a constant state of free fall. Thanks to their orbits around the Earth, they are always falling, but never landing. No, you would not explode in space either. You would inflate, though that's because nitrogen in your bloodstream would gather into bubbles and puff you up to double your size. But that's not what's going to kill you. It's the lack of oxygen after 15 seconds in space. Your brain wouldn't get enough oxygen through your blood and you would lose consciousness. After two minutes in your space, your other organs would start shut down one by one. You may have heard that the planet all have their own song. This one has roots going back thousands of years when ancient astronomers theorized about the music of the spheres. They thought that the movements of the planets might produce a form of music in itself. Well, that didn't exactly prove true, but the magnetic field of the planets do interact with charged particles and radio emissions. That results from the interaction can be turned into sound waves. Our entire solar system is just sitting in one spot in the galaxy. It's hurtling through space at 220 kilometers per second. That's seven times faster than the speed of Earth revolves around the Sun. Our solar system takes about 230 million years to take one orbit around the galaxy. Of course, the last time we were in the same location here now, Earth had one supercontinent and the dinosaurs were just starting to roam around. Fellow planets do not orbit around the Sun. All the things in our solar system are in balance. And even though the Sun is the most massive object in our planetary neighborhood, other planets are participating in this gravitational tug of war. Instead of orbiting the Sun, planets and Moon orbit around at a central point between them and our Sun. The point is called a barycenter. For Earth, this very center is so close to the Sun's core that there is not much of the difference. But for Jupiter, this point is about 15,000 kilometers away from the center of the Sun, so the gas giant in the Sun are orbiting each other. And another misconception is there is not actually a dark side of the Moon, at least not one. That's permanently dark. The reality is the moon is tightly locked to the Earth. That means the moon takes the same amount of time to make one full spin on its axis as it does to revolve around the Earth. That means you only ever to get see sunlight hit one of the side, but every side of the moon gets lit every day. Let's bring you all the way back to home. Now from your vantage point out in space, this beautiful blue marble might have looked to be a perfect sphere after all that what you have been told your whole life. But I bet you can guess what I'm going to say next. Well, that's another lie. Earth is technically an obstacle and oblate spheroid. That means it's slightly flattened on the north and south poles, while it blows out at the equator, how did it get away? Well, just imagine when the planet was forming, it was a bit a ball of clay as it spin the top and bottom, get a bit squished down. 
while the middle looks more bloated. That's enough space, man, for today. But for such amazing videos, keep watching. Just imagine.